Well, I want to talk about speaking in tongues. Yep. It's a controversial topic for a lot of people, but I want to talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's pull out the Bible and let's see what it says. For me personally, I'll go ahead and give away. Speaking in tongues is something that I do. It's something that I value. And that's why I actually want to teach on it is because I believe it's a gift from the Lord that can help us in our spiritual lives, to bring strength to our heart, to give us faith, to do spiritual warfare. And uh, it's going to ultimately help us to pray and to worship. So we're going to dive into the Bible today and see what it has to say about speaking in tongues. I'm going to share a little bit of my journey and just try to be as raw and honest as I can about my experience. So thank you so much for tuning in today. If you're new to the Presence Pioneers podcast, welcome. Our podcast exists to equip you and your community to host and to experience the presence of God through day and night worship and prayer because we believe God's presence changes everything. So on Thursdays, we release a new episode. It's either a short little Bible teaching like today or it's an extended conversation and interview with leaders in the worship and prayer movement or Bible teachers on either a certain topic or their experience and journey as a pioneering leader. And so please hit subscribe however you're tuning in and uh, stay in touch with us. We would love to continue to help you and to resource you in this journey as we move forward. You can visit our website also at presencepioneers.org. We've got all of the episodes up there that you can search. You can click on a topic and find all the episodes about a certain topic or keyword, and you can also learn more about our ministry and donate there as well if you would like to do that. So let's dive in to the teaching today about speaking in tongues. I actually speak and pray in tongues a lot personally. Uh, it's been a gift it's, that I'm so thankful for to the Lord. It's been so helpful for me in my walk and my journey with God. Uh, we're going to be looking mostly in 1 Corinthians like chapter 12, 13, and 14. This is where the Apostle Paul teaches about the spiritual gifts. And specifically in chapter 14, he really gets into detail about the gift of tongues and the gift of prophecy. And in chapter 14, verse 18, he says, uh, I thank God I speak with tongues more than you all. So Paul was so confident that he spoke in tongues so much that he could say that I speak in tongues more than any of you guys who are there in the church at Corinth, even though this was a church that was known for being uh, charismatic and using the gifts of the Spirit and tongues and prophecy and faith and words of knowledge and these kinds of supernatural things, miracles and healings. Uh, but Paul said, I speak in tongues a lot. So if this was an important part of Paul's ministry, uh, we should really consider that. If this was an important part of his prayer life, we should consider that. And I have experienced as I've gotten to meet some key leaders of movements and large churches that a lot of the the leaders I've met with that are that are really in high level leadership in the church and stewarding a lot, responsible for a lot, they pray in tongues a lot. I've experienced it that for many of them, speaking and praying in tongues is a huge thing for them as well. So I, I believe that every spiritual gift that's mentioned in the Bible, including all of the miraculous supernatural ones, I believe all of those are still for today, just to be clear. Uh, I believe that the Holy Spirit can manifest any of, any gift that he wants through any believer. So in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 11, it says, But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he will. So he's just listed all the gifts of the Spirit that he mentions in 1 Corinthians 12, and he says uh, that the Spirit distributes them like he wants to, as he wills. And so I believe that uh, the Holy Spirit can give any of us the gift of tongues. So I'm not going to try today to justify speaking in tongues as if it's something that Christians should do or not. I'm going to assume that that's the case. That's uh, what I believe. I know many of you who are tuning in already believe that, but I do want to give some hopefully some biblical understanding to the purpose of tongues, the different kinds of tongues. And uh, and for some of you, maybe you're going to do this for the first time after watching this today, or maybe you're going to do it more often, uh, and it's going to be really helpful to your to your spiritual life and just really give a like a turbo charge to your prayer life and your walk with the Lord. So uh, again, I believe any spirit-filled Christians can pray in tongues. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14, here, verse five, uh, he says that I wish you all spoke with tongues. 
I wish you all spoke with tongues. Well, that's pretty obvious that he wants every believer in Corinth to speak in tongues. So I think it's good and right that Christians would pursue this. When, when he talks about the gifts of the Spirit, he says to pursue the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and uh, I believe that God wants to baptize us with his Holy Spirit. And when he does that, I believe it empowers us with gifts, supernatural gifts. And I just did a... Uh, a recent podcast episode that we'll link to in the show notes about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I believe that as we're baptized in the Holy Spirit, God empowers us with gifts. And one of those gifts is the gift of tongues. And most of the time in the Bible, when you see the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you see the gift of tongues come immediately after that. Uh, Pentecostals even believe that it is the evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I would say uh, it's an evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and it tends to be more so uh, than any other gift of the Spirit. So if you're not filled with the Spirit, baptized in the Holy Spirit, I pray today as you're listening, that you will ask the Holy Spirit to baptize you with his power, that you'll ask him to give you the gifts of the Holy Spirit and give you the gift of tongues. Even right now, God, I pray that those who are watching, that you would release, those who are listening, you would release your power right now. You would touch them wherever they're listening, in their cars, you know, taking a walk or in the gym, God, even begin to fill them with your Holy Spirit in a fresh way. Release your power. God, release the gifts of your spirit. I pray that your people would cry out and call for the gifts of your spirit in humility and say, God, we need your power and we want all that you have for us, including the gift of tongues. Release it, God. I pray that people would pray in the spirit, even as they're listening and watching uh, to this episode today. Release your Holy Spirit. God, upon us and empower us to, to walk in your spirit and to speak in tongues in Jesus' name. So, you know, Jesus said, he believes in me that as the scripture laid out, his heart will flow with living water. This he spoke concerning the spirit, John 7, 38 through 39. So I believe the Holy Spirit wants to flow out of us. And many times the gift of tongues feels like a flow of the Holy Spirit right out of our mouths. Psalm 81, 10 says, open your mouth wide and I will fill it. And I believe that as we step out in faith and begin to open our mouths to speak in tongues, the Holy Spirit will fill it and he'll empower us, and it's going to be the Holy Spirit river flowing through us, helping us, strengthening us, releasing his power, and stirring up our hearts as we pray and sing in the Spirit. All right, well, let's get into a little bit here of, of what the Bible says about the gift of tongues, some of the different kinds of tongues, and then I'm going to share a little bit of my journey here at the end of kind of what it feels like for me as I'm using this gift. Uh, I see two uh, very clear, broad categories of tongues. So, you know, it, it's not the gift of tongue, it's the gift of tongues. And so it is plural. Some people divide up this gift in different ways. I see in 1 Corinthians 13, 1, two broad categories. So this is the love chapter, 1 Corinthians 13. It's sandwiched right between 1 Corinthians 12 about the gifts of the Spirit and 1 Corinthians 14, which focuses on prophecy and tongues and the way those should be used in church meetings. Right in the middle, Paul talks about love, and he uh, says in verse 1 of 1 Corinthians 13, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. Now he says, speak with tongues of men, number one, and he says, speak with tongues of angels. So I believe that there's two broad categories biblically. There's speaking with the tongues of men and speaking with the tongues of angels. Both supernaturally, the Holy Spirit can empower us to use uh, languages, the tongues, that's what the word tongues means, languages, languages of men and languages of angels or heavenly languages. So again, the word tongues means languages. And the first time you see this gift manifesting is in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost when God pours out his spirit upon the church, releases his power, and what happens? The believers, the disciples begin to preach, but they're speaking in other languages, and the people are understanding the gospel in their own language supernaturally. So they're speaking languages, they're speaking tongues of men. 
Okay, so this is languages of men. God can use the gift of tongues to empower us to speak languages that we don't actually know, which is pretty amazing, <laughs> pretty awesome. And uh, and so from what, I've un- from what I understand, this happens especially in pioneering missions context, where God will put people in places with uh, people groups that they don't know the languages, and he'll supernaturally give them the languages. This happened a lot during the Azusa Street Revival. God would baptize people in the Holy Spirit and give them the gift of tongues to speak languages for certain nations, and they would travel to those nations, and they were able to speak those languages, and it opened up a door for the gospel for those people. Uh, And I do think we should also learn languages uh, before we go to the nations, but sometimes God does this kind of thing uh, supernaturally. I mean, I I know people, uh, this one lady who told me about how her husband knew Hebrew. She did not know Hebrew, but she was speaking in tongues, and her husband was understanding some of what she was saying because some of her tongues were in Hebrew, and she was actually praying and speaking about the age to come, the world to come. Uh, in Hebrew, and he was understanding what she was speaking in tongues. So this kind of crazy thing happens uh, when we begin to allow the gift of tongues to flow through us. It's the tongues of men. God gives us languages, human languages, to speak supernaturally that we don't know. And the other kind of tongues is is the tongues of angels, the languages of angels, heavenly languages. Now, these are languages we don't know, and, and that we cannot understand with our natural mind, and other people can't understand either. Okay, so these are sounds um, that are unintelligible. Okay, so this is more of the kind of tongues you see Paul talking about in 1 Corinthians 14, because it's very clear, and I encourage you, I'm not going to read through these chapters for the sake of time. I'd encourage you to go back and read 1 Corinthians 12, 13, 14, because Paul's talking about in chapter 14, the gift of tongues, but he's talking about how it needs to be interpreted. And so why would you need to interpret uh, the gift of tongues if it's languages that humans already understand? So in, in Acts chapter 2, at the day of Pentecost, of course, those tongues didn't have to be interpreted <laughs> because they were already supernaturally getting human languages and they understood what was being spoken. And that was the miracle in itself. But what Paul's describing in 1 Corinthians 14 is people are speaking in tongues that we don't understand, and then the the Holy Spirit begins to interpret them for us supernaturally, not that someone's speaking Chinese and they don't really know Chinese, and there's a Chinese person in the room and they understand it. That's not what he's talking about in 1 Corinthians 14. He's saying people are making unintelligible sounds, syllables, syllables and noises, syllables, I'm speaking in tongues almost there. Uh, he's <laughs> syllables and sounds that people don't understand, but supernaturally God is interpreting some of those tongues. These are the tongues of angels, heavenly languages, heavenly tongues, heavenly prayer languages that God gives us. And a lot of times this is what people think of when they think of the gift of tongues. Now, there's a couple of purposes uh, for uh, the gift of tongues, these heavenly languages that Paul lays out here in 1 Corinthians 14. I'm going to share a couple of them with you. Verse 2, he says, He who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. So tongues of angels are are to God. They're mysteries. We don't understand what's being spoken of, and it's a way to speak to God. Or in other words, it's a way to pray, which is why the gift of tongues is really important for us as communities that are pursuing worship and prayer. Uh, The gift of tongues is, is a really important gift for us, and it's to God, and it's not to men. Verse four says, he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself but he who prophesies edifies the church. So speaking in tongues, these heavenly languages, the the tongues of angels, it edifies us because no one understands what we're saying, but something's happening in our own heart that's building us up. It's edifying our hearts. It's edifying our souls. It's bringing strength to us as we pray in tongues. Verse 13 says, Therefore let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. So, It's to God, it's stirring ourselves up, but sometimes 
God is going to give a supernatural revelation, a supernatural interpretation of the gift of tongues so that the things that are being spoken and prayed to God can be shared with other people. And it really, at that point, that word becomes a prophetic word word to people. And that's why there's also a gift of the of interpretation of tongues along with the gift of tongues, because some people have the gift of tongues, and then sometimes people will operate in the gift of interpretation, and they'll understand what somebody else is speaking or what the, themselves are speaking in tongues. So number one, uh, these heavenly languages, these tongues of angels are, are so that we can speak to God. Number two, that we would edify ourselves. Number three, to be interpreted so that they would become a prophecy. And number four uh, is to help us pray and worship. So verses 14 through 15, he says, if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with understanding. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with understanding. So he says, if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. So you see here, he's praying in the spirit and he's praying in understanding. He's singing in the spirit and he's singing with understanding. So you have understanding and you have in the spirit and you have singing and you have prayer. So the gift of tongues helps us to pray and to worship. Uh, These tongues of angels is not something we're to understand. It's a spiritual language, a heavenly language. It's for God. it's It's for our spiritual edification. And sometimes it will be interpreted. Um, and you could begin to break the, this down a little bit more into some additional categories, but we're not going to do that today. And we're just going to keep these categories, tongues of men and tongues of angels. But I do want to highlight this idea of praying in the spirit. Uh, this is a podcast focused on prayer and worship. And, and these verses, I think, are very important because when you look here at verse 14, He says, if I pray in a tongue, if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. So he's connecting this idea of praying in tongues and praying in the spirit. And and those two terms in 1 Corinthians 14 overlap. He's saying praying in tongues is praying in the spirit. And so he says, you know, when I pray with the spirit, I'll also pray with understanding. In other words, if I pray in tongues, I will also pray with understanding. These are synonymous here. And so uh, the goal is not to speak another language or to understand it. The goal is to interact with God. It's to pray in tongues, to, to interact in that spirit realm. So the emphasis throughout this passage is the value of interpretation. Uh, even as we speak in tongues, we're encouraged to also be praying Uh, In other words, praying in the Spirit to understand, to interpret what's being spoken. So sometimes while we're praying in tongues, we'll understand what's going on. God will begin to reveal ideas. uh, You'll you'll discover as you grow in speaking in tongues, you're going to get visions, you're going to get ideas, you're going to get wisdom, you're going to get insight, revelation. I pray in tongues many times when I'm reading through the Bible uh, and and inviting the Holy Spirit to illuminate things as I'm reading. And uh, and it, it also, it brings strength to our hearts. Again, it's it says that praying in tongues edifies ourselves. That word means it's, it's connected to this word edifice, edifying an edifice. It means that it builds us up. It's like a building, an edifice, a structure. It's like when we pray in tongues, we're building something inside of us. We're creating space to receive from God, to receive revelation. That's what happens as we pray and sing in the Spirit. It's like we're building a structure inside of our hearts and souls to receive revelation, receive encounter, to be filled with Him, be filled with His love in a fresh way. It gives us faith. Jude, the book of Jude, verse 20, says, But you, beloved, build yourselves up in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. So when we pray in the Spirit, it builds up our faith. Praying in the Spirit is also an act of spiritual warfare. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6, it, it talks about the, the armor of God, and it says the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. And then immediately it says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So 
Praying in tongues is also an act of spiritual warfare. God takes these words, these sounds that we don't understand, that we don't know, and it sounds just like nonsense syllables that are coming out of our mouths, and God takes those, and He is praying through us, and He's fighting through us in prayer uh, against the enemy, against the enemy's plans for us and and others as well, and it becomes intercession many times. And as we pray in the Spirit, it becomes spiritual warfare, and God can pray through us. His Holy Spirit can flow through us with this gift of tongues. So what does it feel like when you do it? Uh, and, and I'm sure it's different for every person, but I just want to just kind of do my best to share what it's like for me. Uh, what speaking in tongues does not ever feel like is that God grabs my tongue and mouth and vocal cords and controls them without my involvement at all. That never is what it feels like. It's always a partnership with the Holy Spirit, me taking a step of faith, and then God meeting me there and supernaturally empowering me. Um, When I first started speaking in tongues, I was a teenager, and honestly, I thought I was making it up. I didn't think it was real because it didn't feel super spiritual. I didn't always have goosebumps all over me or anything like that. Um, but the, the reality is if we're filled with the Spirit, the supernatural does feel more natural. And so if we are empowered by the Holy Spirit, full of the Holy Spirit, then as we take a step of faith, begin to open our mouths, begin to make sounds, God's going to flow through that. And many times for me, that's what it, exactly what it feels like. It's me starting to make sounds out of my mouth, and, I, and it begins to flow, and it bypasses my mind and begins to flow out of my heart and my spirit. And there's actually scientific studies. You can find a YouTube video where they hooked people's brain monitors up <clears throat> and had them speak in tongues. And as they're speaking and, and singing in tongues, their minds connected to speech are actually disengaged. They're not thinking about speaking uh, because when we speak in tongues, we're not thinking with the same part of our minds and analyzing the ideas. We're letting the Holy Spirit flow through us. And so sometimes it doesn't feel like a flow at first. Sometimes it feels like you're, you're doing it intentionally. Um, but usually what will happen is, is if I continue to pray in tongues for a while, I will hit this flow and begin to feel the presence of God uh, in a greater way. So again, ask the Holy Spirit to baptize you, fill you with His Spirit, and begin to release that river, begin to speak in tongues. I would encourage you to include this in the normal part of your prayer life every single day. Pray in tongues in the car. Pray in tongues when you have a few minutes. Uh, Pray in the Spirit uh, all the time. Uh, You just have to open up your mouth and do it. And when you begin to uh, develop this muscle, so to speak, and develop this habit, you're going to be so thankful because it's going to energize you spiritually all the time. Um, And and sometimes I will say, excuse me, sometimes I'm in, especially in times of worship, there's times where it's like tongues feels like it kind of explodes out of me. Uh, Usually when I'm singing and there's in these times of worship, but most of the time, Uh, I have to do it intentionally, and I never lose control of myself. God doesn't take over us, so to speak. He doesn't totally possess us. We always have self-control. That is a fruit of the Spirit. So God gives us self-control, but then we we take control of ourselves, we submit to Him, and we step out in faith, and the gift of of the Spirit begin to flow, including the gifts of praying in tongues, which I'm so thankful for. It's been so helpful to me. And I hope that you have a better understanding now of what it means to pray in tongues. I hope you're stirred to do it. You're realizing the benefit of it, the power of it, the joy of it, and uh, understanding maybe more of what it feels like to do it. And so God, I ask, Lord, in Jesus' name for everyone that's tuning in today, that they would be filled with your Holy Spirit to speak and to pray in tongues, that the river of your Spirit would flow out of their mouths in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in to the podcast today. Uh, Again, please subscribe so you can stay in touch with us. If you enjoyed today's episode, please share it on social media. Send it to your friends and share it with your communities. That would be amazing. If you're on YouTube, give us a little thumbs up. Leave us a comment. If you're on Apple, please leave us a rating or a review. All of those things help the algorithms so that more people encounter these teachings and encounter the revelation of day and night worship and prayer and the fact that God's presence changes everything. Thanks so much for tuning in. God bless.